Um, I watch all sports, and I've been doing podcasts for a while. And uh, actually, I do a, a separate podcast with uh, me and my friends, uh, James, Julian. You should check them out too, J- Julian, James, uh, and then Grunt, uh, Jason, Darren. Okay. So hey, we're doing a Zoom call tonight because we just partnered up with Grunt Talk Sports, it's called. You should check them out on Twitter. And uh, so we, we just dropped our own podcast last month. Uh, it's called Roundtable, but we're switching the name. So I'm really excited about that. That podcast is on Zoom. So and then we're, we're all of us are having a Zoom call tonight at seven just to because we to announce that partnership with Grunt, Talk, Grunt Talks. And um, so that's a separate podcast. But the thing I'm doing right now during this pandemic is building my own brand. Uh, it's called the NR Hour podcast, where I bring on all kinds of guests. I had actors on, even sports athletes, former athletes, reporters. Uh, and then yesterday I had on like Antonio Cromartie, for example, he came on and, and then a few other great guests. So I'm for me, it's just building my brand and talking to each of these people, knowing what where, where they came from, the story, the background. And um and it's going well, so it's working well. So after once I once I have enough content from the NR hour, this is where I will be putting it in our other podcasts that we had we're, we're announcing. So yeah, I mean you put in a lot of work, man. I mean you you're you're going like you're grinding every day. You put out like quality content every day. So it's uh you know so like I said it's a it's an honor to have you on the show because I know you've been you you're busy like you have four or five guests a day sometimes. <laughs> and um, so it, it's it's good to you know good to to listen to your show. I listen to your show when I'm working. Oh, thank you, know, you. Yeah. Day. I, you know, I jump in on your IG lives a lot and just kind of listen and comment and everything. Like I said, so tell us a little bit about the show. Like, how do you how do you pick your guests? Because you said you've had entertainers, you've had um, uh, agents, uh, sports reporters, you've had podcasters and actors and athletes. I mean, you you go like right, how do, how tell us a little bit about the show. So. Obviously, it's a sports show, but I like to expand it to where everybody, so I, I like to bring on like inspiring people from different mm-hmm. backgrounds. And uh, the, 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 the things I say are some people now I'm getting people reaching out to me because they all see my content. So that's that's the main that's a good thing because it's all about the content at, at the end of the day. And but uh, the things yeah. I say to, to these people when I reach out, I say, how are you? How are your family doing? Um, how you guys uh, uh, and then also I give them a breakdown on the podcast and I say would you like to come on the podcast on this day or whatever which day whenever so uh, and then once I do that I give them a breakdown it should be, and then I tell them how many they, they usually ask me how many how long this will take the interview so I say like 15 to 18 minutes or 18 to 22 um, so I and then they say okay I'm in let's do this and I tell them um, some prefer so I do interviews on Zoom, Skype, and Instagram Live, uh, all three formats. But some people like to do interviews on Skype and Zoom, so I, I agree to that um, because you don't want to lose out the opportunity to interview these type of people. people. Right. So I agree, whatever I agree to whatever they say, and I agree to their schedule. And obviously, most of the Instagram Live, but. I, I, I love doing it on Skype and Zoom. So I, that, that's, that's how I'd be getting these big time guests by agreeing to what they say, because I think that's the most important thing when you when you're an interviewer, because you have to make them feel comfortable when they come on the show. Yes. Yep. I agree. I 100 percent agree. And like you said, um, I see how your guest list and some we had some of the similar um, guests on our shows. You know, like you said, Kelsey Nicole Nelson was one. Yeah. Um, that I've had, like I said, on multiple times. I know you've had like Renee Washington. I've been trying to been trying to lock her down, but she's been busy. She's got a nice uh, podcast too. She is, uh, she's, a, she's doing yeah. a great job. Yeah, yeah, she's doing a couple of different um, a couple of different podcasts. I know she just started a new one on Twitter. I think too, it's a you know kind of a different. She's talking about a lot about social issues and things like that. So, but like I usually ask too, like how are you doing throughout all, all this? You know, with the the pandemic and how's your family and and everything, how are you um, maintaining and holding holding up uh, with safety and everything? Um, yeah, so same. You you say you pretty much put the, bring the breakdown for your podcast too when you uh, reach out to these guests. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I I can't, what I do. I start like Monday. I'll start like okay, who what am I going to talk about? Who who am I going to uh, who am I going to put on? Who who right. I want to put on the show? So I'll go through and. 
like, okay, I haven't talked to this person in a while. Some some of the guests I've had, they've been on multiple times. So mm-hmm. usually when I hit them up, they're like, okay, yes. What, what, what do we want to talk about? Then I'll give them the, like I kind of, I reached out to you like a couple of days before, gave you the topics, say how long it's going to be. Cause I knew you, like I said, I knew you were going to record later. So I said, well, I'll, we'll do it earlier. So like I said, make them feel comfortable uh, just having a conversation like this. And um, um, yeah, so that's how I reach out. Either I reach out by Twitter, Instagram, um, some I have their phone numbers, so or or email, you know. So that's how I kind of break break it down. And if, you know, you get you get you get no's, you get some no's, and or they need another time. Yeah. So you just keep yeah. persistent. You know that that happens. But a lot of other times, usually it's a yes. So most of like ninety percent of times it's a yes, and they just need a need to find a t- the right time to do it. So. Mm-hmm. So um, but yeah. So tell me some of the some of the guests, some of your favorite guests that you've had on your show. Oof, man, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, man, that I, I would like to say all. I mean, obviously, I don't. I, I'm not biased here, but uh, I gotta say all of them. But okay, if let me give you the most. Actually, I'll give you the most inspiring ones and the most. Uh, okay, yeah, that works. Yeah, yeah. So let me give you the the most. So I would say, uh, obviously, yesterday I had Antonio Camardi, the former Jet. And uh, mm-hmm. a cornerback, yeah, that was a a, a a a great one. I had Anita Collins from ESPN. That's another one. Okay. Uh, Jay Harris, Jay Harris was another one. Um, mm. Big time, Damian, big time stars. Yeah, Damian Woody was another one. Uh, I saw that one. Yep. Uh, who else? Oh, I would say I had uh, no David Tyree. Um, okay. Uh, Alex Hacker, a former Pippin Clippers player. Okay. Um, okay. And I would say Nabil Kareem from ESPN also. Um Renee Washington, obviously, and Kelsey. I would put them up there. Um trying to see who else. Oh, and then uh, uh Jose Moto from yesterday, former baseball player, and he's the Angels analyst. I mean, you can go down the list, and uh, I, I, mean, I, have a, I had a lot of really good, uh, inspiring stories on my show. So, yeah, you have, and that's a, like I said, that's a that's a great rundown of a of a list of guests that you've had. Like, and you like I said, you do it every day. So, uh, let everyone know where they can find. Like I said, you, I know you're on Instagram, but let everyone know where they can find um, your show, and you know, and how do you, and how do you, and, and one thousand, how do you pick your guests too, like. Do you just go? Um, do you have like a a system that you want to do, or would you like to discuss? How do you pick your guest and let them know where they can find your podcast? Oh, they can find me on uh, Twitter, obviously Instagram, uh, Zoom, Sky, Facebook, YouTube, and then I, I actually whenever whenever when I pick my guest, I, I tell them where you can find me before beforehand, so they yes. know about my stuff. Yeah, so that's okay. why I, I keep I, I send them my stuff, my contacts and. Uh, my Twitter, my Instagram, I send them all of that stuff before they, so because they, so they know who, who they're going to get interviewed by. No doubt. Yeah. And like I said, your guest list is, uh, is unbelievable. I mean, you're not just in sports and sports media, as you yeah. said, I mean, that's the main, that's the main, you know, um, subject of your, of your show, but you have more, like I said, variety and, you know, actors and, um, activists and, you know, a lot of different things. And I try to do that same thing, not just rely to sports, but, uh, cause a lot of, a lot of our guests that seem, you know, even though they're into sports media, they talk about other things like what's going on today with, you know, the social injustices and the, um, and things like that. So, um, and the racism, so they want a platform. We give, we're giving them as much of a platform as we can, which I think is great that we have that this platform. And so, so incredible work that you do. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. I I, I I really appreciate you uh, noting, noticing me all the time. And uh, <clears throat> actually, uh, today at two p.m. I, on Zoom, I having I'm having former Celtics Cedric Maxwell and Tiny Archibald on. I Both saw that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's at big. That, that's somewhere. really big, man. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So I'll be looking forward to that interview. Uh, was coming up, so I wanted to. Uh, so let's get into a couple of things um, before I let you go. Um, let's get into um, some of these sports topics that's been going on today. Well, first. I know you're you're a huge Cowboy fan. I'm yeah. an Eagles fan, so oh. <laughs> uh, it's just a, it's, 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 it's gonna be uh, you know we gonna have we have this rivalry going on, big time rivalry, NFC East rivalry all the time. Actually, Cowboys and Eagles. <laughs> let me let me be sorry to cut you off, but uh, tomorrow actually on IG Live, I'm having former former Eagle Rock Carmichael on. 
Oh, ooh, okay. All yeah. right. That's a hey, that's big time, man. So yeah, I'll be tuning into that. Yeah. Um, so but um, uh, but your Dallas Cowboys, uh, what do you think of their off season? Uh, what do you think of their draft? And will Dak Prescott will he get paid? Like, is he is he going to get paid? And how much do you think he should be paid? Let's start with off. Uh, let's start start off with the off season. Um, actually, I had uh, uh, one of the Cowboys reporters on my show last week. His name is Shannon Gross. Uh, he's a, a really good Cowboys reporter out there, and uh, so I had him on. He so obviously our we have a new coaching regime and a lot, uh, new coaching staff and new players. I really like what we did during the off season signing uh, veteran players, and uh, we're we're doing a new. I think we're switching to a four three with Mike Nolan, our defensive a new defensive coordinator. So I really like that, and the players we got like. Uh, Alden Smith is an interesting one to me because he hasn't played in five years. So I feel like bringing him into camp and uh, hopefully he can. Uh, Jerry Jones likes to bring in gambles like this. <laughs> you remember, for example, Greg Hardy was one. Pac Man Jones was another one. He likes yeah. to bring on these uh, like off the field issue guys. But he, it, sometimes it works out for him, it doesn't. But hopefully, Alden Smith, uh, by seeing this opportunity, hopefully he does not slip away. So he, hopefully he takes full advantage of this opportunity. But Jared McCoy was a big pickup. I really like that. He, he saw some left in the tank and that he will bring big help into the defense. And obviously we needed a safety. So I really like Ha Ha Clinton Dix. So that's a really good pickup. And I mean, all the offseason moves he did, especially the draft. I think Jerry Jones should be drafting from his yacht for now on. <laughs> because I feel like he got lucky. Yeah, I feel he's like he got relaxed, lucky, right? Yeah. yeah. Because um, so if you have, you have, if you were able to, I mean, you have we have two players that slipped to our, uh, slipped at seventeen at fifty one. Trayvon Diggs and C D Lamb. Man, that's a heck of a two two players right there. And I'm really excited to see what they have to what they bring to Dallas. And uh, and then the rest of the draft was awesome. And we hit on everything. And we 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 got a replacement for Travis Frederick. And the funny thing is he's from Wisconsin, too. And Jerry Jones loved these Wisconsin players. So kudos to him. Uh, Jerry Jones, I think uh, this is one of the, his best off seasons he ever had. And Mike McCarthy, he's going to bring a different intensity level and better than Jason Garrett. So we don't we don't need to see the clapper anymore. So I'm good. I'm happy about <laughs> you that. You don't need a clapper so, no more. <laughs> <laughs> Mike McCarthy, he's going to bring a hard nose type of way. And I, I mean, I just love the coaching staff. And uh, let me t- don't be surprised because Cowboys are known they really like special teams. So uh, by getting the guy from the Rams, John Fossil, that's another that's a steal of free agency right there, coaching wise. I feel like he will bring that intensity level at the coaching side. But all in all, great off season for us. And uh, to your question to Dak, man, um, he that's a tough one. But I think he deserves his money. I feel like we should pay him, and then he has he has no excuse now. He has all the weapons that he wants with C.D. Lamp, Zeke, uh, obviously Amari Cooper, and the tight ends. But uh, there's no excuse. This uh, I, I think the I think the issue here is it's the it's the money. Obviously, but the the years I would give him four years max, and then give him the money. But I don't know what, what he's gonna. Obviously, he wants to be the highest paid quarterback in the league, but. I don't see him at obviously he's not like Mahomes. He's not Mahomes. He's not, he needs to, he needs to be more consistent in the pocket. So I feel like, uh, I mean, I, I think we're going to pay him soon, but just to see how we just have to see what Jerry Jones does. Yeah. Um, the, the thing with Dak, I think it's, um, more, he, I mean, he's a really good, I mean, he's a really good quarterback and, you know, they they went what eight and eight last year, seven and nine, eight and eight last season. So, I mean, the, the, the greatest the year he's had, it was, you know, it was it was still wasn't enough, you know, even with that bad division as it was. The Eagles snuck in at nine and seven to get in the play to get in the playoffs to win that division. But um, I, you know, I think you should you gotta pay Dak. I mean, there's no there's no um no way you can't, you shouldn't, but you you definitely should. I guess it depends on the money. He wants a longer term deal. You know, he wants at least, I guess, a five-year guaranteed deal. I think he he, he, does, he needs to get paid. I guess he needs to get paid in that Carson Wentz, Jared Goff type of money. But then he wants – but he wants even more than that. So, I don't know. I don't know if he should – I don't know if he should get Russell Wilson type money or definitely uh, definitely not Patrick Mahomes. You know, Mahomes is going to get about $38, 40000000 a year. 
So I got Dax. He, he, he's going to get paid. It just now it's up to him. Like, <clears throat> okay, what you want that guaranteed money? It depends on the guaranteed money. I think that's what it is in the law and the, how many years on the contract. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah. Yeah, so I think he will get paid. I think the Cowboys will pay him because if not, they could be in a world of hurt, <laughs> you know, if they don't pay Dak, <laughs> you know. So, but I got one more, uh, one more topic. I want to get your opinion on this NBA. You know, the NBA's, you know, they got the, they have the, the, the plan in place. Supposed to be Disney World, um, the bubble, but now reports came out that they're, um, you know, eighty to hundred players were on a Zoom call yesterday. And they're, they know, they got a lot of concerns. Like they don't think it's the right time. They might not want, they might not come back. The NBA's in jeopardy. So Kyrie Irving, Carmelo Anthony um, started a, you know, Zoom call with concerns about safety issues and, you know, with the protesting and things like that. So what's your thoughts on the players coming together and um, letting their voices be heard? I, I, I like that. I actually, kudos to them. Uh, Kyrie Irving speaking out. I, I saw his quotes earlier, so I don't want to say here, but uh, he he voiced his opinion. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I kind of I like uh, what they're doing, and I, they deserve they deserve uh, everything. They can do whatever they want because uh, I feel like this um, this seems to kind of rush for them uh, with the Disney World stuff, and they don't know where they're going to stay. And obviously, they have to stay in Disney World now with all this the 22-team format, and obviously they have families, kids. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think the main, I think that's a, I think they're doing a great job with that zoom call and keep up, keep speaking, I guess that's my opinion. Speak until Adam Silver does something. Uh, but now the concern, now, <laughs> now the concern for Adam Silver is to have is probably a counter deal or counter offer, but they basically agreed to this deal where they were going to start the season July 31st in uh, Disney world. But now I, I, I don't know. It could break off. I don't know how this is going to work, but if players decide not to go, man, that's going to be a huge issue, huge, uh, issue for Adam Silver. Yeah, I mean, the one thing about the NBA I think that's different, I said at the top of the show, that's different from um, all the other leagues. This is a player's league, so he allows the players to have a voice. Yeah. Unlike, you know, NFL, where now – Roger Goodell realizes that the players should have a voice, should have some type of voice. Baseball, there's really not a voice for the for the athletes. We see what's going on with the negotiations there. Yeah, that's, that's like a... that, that 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 might be in jeopardy. Uh, hockey, that there, there's probably going to be a hockey season. I think they got the plan in place. They're going to start right in the playoffs. So they may probably should just do that. Start the playoffs so it can be a faster season. If that, but there's more. I think the NBA, you know, they voice their opinions on a lot of different things, which. I'm I'm all for it. Adam Silver allows them to have that platform, which I think is great for you know for them. And um, if the players don't feel comfortable, Adam Silver will probably he'll probably pull the plug on the season. But he's gonna I think before that he's gonna first give them a give them a chance to um, to voice their opinion. He's probably gonna you know they need more details on the safety issues because it's a safety issue. It's a huge health and safety risk um, if they go into this bubble. How many people they can bring? Can they leave? Where do you know? It's, it's a lot going on with COVID, so we, there's there's no answer. Um, they don't. Really, I don't know if they like the format. So there's gonna be more detail. I can't wait to see what happens. Um, if they're gonna have a season, if some players want to play, because LeBron came out late last night and said that um, he, you know, he thinks he can still be an activist and still have you know have a voice with the social issues and and play and which which is needed for sports to be needed in society. So. When LeBron speaks, you know, mostly people listen. <laughs> so it's good. That's going to be the one thing I, I think now if LeBron says let's play, maybe the players will follow follow suit. We'll see. Yeah, I, I, I think, <laughs> like, I, I agree with you. LeBron is uh, the voice of the NBA, in my opinion. And um, it, it's going to be interesting to see what they do here. And to be honest, I hate to say this, just cancel the season and just wait till – and then figure out what to do with the next season because I feel like it's going to, with all this negotiations and especially for baseball, they're, they're going back and forth like this. I don't see them playing. I don't see them playing past December. So why not just cancel that and then figure out for next year? Because the whole negotiation is kind of stupid to me, and it's just going back and forth. It's like, and then the fan, the fans are getting restless right now on Twitter. Yeah. So yeah. they're making the fans look look. I mean, they're they're making the players look bad. Even themselves look bad, so why not just figure out a way, maybe agree to the deal, or just cancel the whole thing and wait till next year? 
Yeah, yeah, and I didn't do a baseball. I mean, because they're arguing about money. So, um, and if they don't have a season, I think that's going to hurt them more than even the NBA because with baseball, that when they were locked out many years ago, it took a long time before fans really um, got back into baseball. So I think this will hurt them even more if they don't even have even part of a season. But as you said, it's getting later and later. They talk about they want a season by July, as of July 4th, maybe like July 10th. But they got to get, they're arguing about money where, we're we're having issues with unemployment and things like that. So we're talking billionaires and million millionaires and billionaires arguing about money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it, it's it's you know we're looking at it like let's let's just get some a season going, eighty games. Players they, they players got should take a little bit of a pay cut. I I believe you know because they, they want their full salary. Yeah. <laughs> so but you're not playing a full season, so you're not you shouldn't get you're not going to get your full salary. But that's where they I think that's where um uh, where that that line is. But I think that hurts them more than. In basketball so um but thank you again nathan for jumping on this show um jumping on the show i really appreciate you man really appreciate what you do um before you go let everyone know again where they can follow you and follow your show on social media so you can follow me on twitter is the nr hour underscore and then instagram the on nr hour underscore same thing i keep it simple and then find me on facebook nathan ramachandra and then youtube same name um and then i have my four uh, my platform is Zoom, Skype, and Instagram Live for the interview, so you can find me all there. And um, actually, I'm recording this, so I'll be posting this on my cell, my all, all social media formats for you. So thank you for having Appreciate me on. It. It's been a uh, yes. pleasure. Yeah, it's been a pleasure, man. Thanks again, man. I uh, really appreciate you and uh, keep up the great work and all those guests, man. I, I, I look at some of your guests. I'm like, yep, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get them too. So <laughs> when you reach out to them, I'd reach out to them too and say, you know, uh, let's, 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 let's keep it together. Keep all the podcasts together and our uh, podcasts together. And, uh, we're all, so I can, you know, yeah, we're all you. family here. Yeah, yeah, we are. We are definitely our podcast family. So thank you, man, for jumping on The Real Deal. And uh, I'll talk to you real soon. Be safe. Yeah, tell, tell Kelsey I said hi. I will. I definitely will. I definitely will <laughs> let Kelsey know. She she's about to jump on about five minutes, so I'll definitely oh, okay. let her let her know you were on. So and uh, right. and say hi to her. Yep, no doubt. Yeah. Thanks, thank man. You so much. Be safe. Yeah, yeah. You stay safe too. One. Yeah, thank, thank you. you.